ever had. I will. Alrighty guys, well we went for our supper date and we got home and we came straight to the barn to check on this girl and there, there was one foot sticking out. So we put the chains on her to give her a hand because she really wasn't trying and got her in the head gate right there and uh, I was on the verge of putting the puller on her but we didn't so what the hell is she uh green 67 blue two, blue two. Okay, oh so little black brockle face heifer calf out of our black brockle face bull that we used to have that injured himself in the bush last summer but she was i watched him breed her two times within 10 minutes uh, so, Yahoo! CP and BP got it done again. Another healthy calf on the ground. That's what you want to see. I'll be back out here to check on him, her, I should say, a little bit later. We'll just leave them alone for a while. Alrighty, guys. Fun, fun, fun. Let's get her done. That's the way it's done. Wish I'd have brought you along for the actual pull, but... Things were happening a little quicker, and when you got a hand, both hands tied up on chains, uh, kind of difficult to video that. Okay, later. And that, my friends, is what you guy wants to see with a new baby. Whether he pulled it or not, he wants to see mom licking it off. You want to see baby up and sucking within a couple hours. And mom cleaned. And I got to get that crap out of there. Okay. So that's a pitchfork. And let me tell you. The old groin that we pulled the other morning is friggin' sore. That bitch cow. And yes, she's still here, and we haven't decided what the hell to do with her yet. Ah, uh, pitchfork, 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 there it is. Okay, mm. guys, I'm going to call her a night. I'm going to get those cleanings out of there. And I'll throw a little fresh straw on it. And uh, I'm going to call her a night. We'll be up early checking on everybody else. So we'll talk to you all later. What? Oh, green 59, yeah. Well, that's her right there, the one that came after me. She's right there. She'll be like one of the first ones to come out of this corral as soon as we open this gate. And we got a new baby laying right over there. I'll just leave them alone. That baby's pretty active. It's a little bull calf. Uh, that red 10, or this psycho cow, she settled down somewhat, but still got to be leery of her a little bit. At least she's not trying to fucking come after me when I'm standing out in the open like this. All right, girls. Who's next going to be on the list? I wonder. And it's melting. You got to be careful where you walk. End up with a boot full of water quite quickly. What are you doing? Hey? 
Well, you got ways to go yet. The udder's not that hard. So we did not feed them today. And because I want them to empty those feed bunks right out really good, we're going to move their feeding station to a different location. But I suspect this afternoon we'll see something new. Another baby of some sort out here. But so far we're three for three. Wait, no, four for four. So that's a positive. And I lied to you guys, our hefferette from last night. We did do a light pull on her. Um, well, semi-light. Um, and I said yesterday that she was almost to the day. Well, she's a, a March 18th. And she was bred on uh, June 10th. So, but anyway so she was only two days out not that big a deal really okay i gotta let you guys go i gotta get my butt in the shop i've got uh three brackets to weld onto that uh, livestock shelter we're doing that pipe frame livestock shelter and the guy's coming this afternoon to pick it up so We'll talk to y'all later when we go to pull it the hell out of the shop. Alrighty guys, so we're in the shop finishing this sucker off. Well, it's done now. What I had to do was see there. Well, obviously that tab and that one and that one are a lot bigger than all these angle iron tabs everywhere else, right? And the reason for that back you up a bit and a little bit more so this right here that's an eight foot wide by eight foot six doorway hole so i put i uh, thinking about it and i got okay we're gonna give him in case he wants like a two by six header up there because he's gonna have a rolling door like you're just gonna slide open to the side so he can put a two by six up there and bolt it into place for his header for his uh, uh, barn door tracking to hang his door from. Now, yeah, eight feet coming out the back end. Well, what the hell's that track gonna hang on? So I made this piece of steel right here and he's gonna have to weld that on at his place off the end right up there because if I weld it on here I won't be able to get this thing out of my shop well I probably could but it'll be nip and tuck to get it out of the shop so I told him about this pipe and he's cool with uh, welding that himself and then I got to thinking well if the door is hanging wide open for a while that's depending on how he builds that door it could be quite a bit of weight so I'm giving him a four foot, it's angle cut, inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter square tubing chunk to use as a gusset piece to put on the underside of this. So that should work for him. All we gotta do now is hook a chain up to this end, to the loader, and pull it the hell out of here. Cool. And I might just wait until he gets here to pull that, I don't know. Maybe I could pull it out now. I'll bring you guys back in a little bit. There, it's outside. So, for anybody wondering, this is not going to be a building that's a portable building for out in the pasture or anything like that. It's going in the guy's yard. So I said it once before, but I'll say it again back you up there it is so this is the front theoretically now the guy has 
another building that he had made a few years back exactly the same size as this exact same design only he used square tubing versus pipe anyways he wants to take this one when he because he's going to put the siding on it and the roof on it and so on and so forth we're just doing the framework and supplying all the steel anyways he's going to put this side up against his because it's an open face also and then it'll become a barn he'll butt the two pieces together open face to open face put those two pieces together that way and his building is 21 feet deep he wanted this one 10 od to od so he'll end up with a building that is 21 feet wide by 25 feet long by 11 feet high at the peak so that'll be his uh calving barn he was here he seen it he really liked it and we discussed things and i told him this is how i think he should do it especially with those extra big tabs for uh putting two by six mount on up there and so on and so forth we try to try to think of every scenario and if the customer wants to go that route great anyways i'm gonna go for a walk through the cows do a check and then we're gonna have some lunch and we'll talk to you guys after lunch see you then there he's loaded up just kind of working his way around trying to stay somewhat out of the mud now for the in his case the worst part of the job in my case the best part of the job it's all the paperwork all right let's get the paperwork done we'll talk to you guys later well guys, I guess there's an old saying that says circle check your equipment before you get in it, right? I didn't do that. Unfortunately. Well, we'll do a quick walkabout, but I what happened this morning was when we tilted the bucket all the way down, I kind of noticed the bucket seems to be a little bit off. And then when I hit it to rake feed down from our cut feed pile, then it was really, really off. The fucker broke out all across there, all the way around. You can kind of sort of see that's all broke out all the way around, across the bottom. Basically, this whole side is doing nothing. And then, this hydraulic seal, it blew up on us. We managed to get the cows fed, but while we were feeding, this seal blew up on us. She's pouring oil out of there like a son of a bitch. All this oil is just from CP tilting it down. That fucker blew up. So we're going to have to get a new hydro seal, seal kit for him. While I'm at it, depending on what the seal kit costs, I very well may get one for that one too. That fucking cylinder almost looks fucking bent a little bit. This ram, oh, it is bent. Why, I have no idea. But that fucker's bent. That's not good. That's not good. That's gonna be a very expensive fucking repair bill. If I have to replace that ram in that son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. I just saw that now that it's bent. Oh, well, first thing first, I got to get that. We got it on a block here and we pushed down to get it back into position. So I got to get that all tacked up. And then I think to weld it in properly, we're going to have to pull the pins and disconnect this uh, mount bracket off of here so I can get in there and weld it up good and proper. I've never fixed on this loader at that point. But I see this side's been all welded up at one time or another by somebody and somewhat reinforced. 
So obviously this is a problem. See, it's all broke out here too. It's been friggin' welded on before. So anyway, I'm Peter Patter, let's get at her. Oh, by the way, good morning, guys. And today is uh, what the hell is it today? The 18th? No, 20th. March 20th, 21st, something like that. So, good morning to everybody. Hope you're all having a good one. Good morning. Yeah. CP says good morning. Good morning. Talk to y'all later. All righty, guys. Well, she ain't perfect, but by golly, it's a whole hell of a lot better than it was. I am not 100% done yet. I had to do some cleanup on it and then on the underside down here, I got to get this out of the road, this piece. So back you up there. This is kind of in my way for getting in here for grinding. And so I got to get this out of the way and then I can back grind a groove into that spot there there you can see it in there and uh, get the paint ground out of there and then weld that in place oh shit oh of course drop my glove right in the fucking oil of course great clean it up after so yeah we got a little bit of playing. I'm gonna let that cool a little. And go from there. But it's a lot better than it was. So now we need bushings for in here because I burnt them out. Fun, fun. Ugh. And if you're wondering what the oil's all from, it's from when we pulled the hydraulic cylinder off of the tractor. My neighbor swung by and he's going to take it to his work and see if they can pull it apart and actually straighten that and check the bore out. So this part of the hydraulic cylinder, he's going to check the inside of this part of the hydraulic cylinder out, the bore and make sure it's not scored and hope to hell that we and then maybe they might be able to get that ram straightened a little back to the where it should be and hopefully we don't have to replace the whole cylinder because i don't imagine that cylinder is going to be very god darn cheap anyway i'm gonna shut her down let that cool a little bit and go have some lunch so we'll talk to you guys in a little while Alrighty guys, well, we're done with the red tractor for now. We got to see what's going to happen with that hydraulic cylinder. We got the front end loader on the blue tractor. And CP and I just dug out our pump. And it's right there. And we're trying to pump some of the water out of this corral. Got the hose a going. And going, going, going. And it goes to there. And then from there, like I know you thinking it's not moving. Well, I'm sure it's moving, but it's going underneath and it goes underneath this snow out that way is where it's going. And if it's not moving, well, then I'm going to have to get over here with the tractor and dig some of that snow out of the fucking trench. Yay! So, but I'm pretty sure it's fucking moving. I haven't really paid attention in our trench if it's got water flowing through it or not. But I'm sure this stuff will start moving it. Uh, so, I hope it's moving. Otherwise... We're doing this for nothing because it'll just back up and go right back into that fucking crowd. Anyway, I'll let you guys go and uh, we'll bring you back a little bit later. There. We got it coming. It was filling in because of the snow in our trench. 
I managed to get in here with the bobcat and I dug it out over there some and I dug this a little bit here I just kind of was able to push it when you fall in that trench then I'm stuck with the bobcat but she's flowing here now so that's a positive and the more it flows the deeper it'll cut the snow and ice underneath and this water runs all the way to our north dugout over there anyway you know the drill guys thumbs up comment subscribe fun 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 let's get her done we'll catch y'all later